Uh, hello, everybody. My name is uh, Bennett Tchaikovsky, and welcome. Uh, this is preparing yourself um, and obtaining an entry-level accounting position. Uh, this is for a non-CPA uh, type of job. I've given this advice many times before, so I thought it would be a great time to actually go through and make a video on it. If I've already made a video on it, you're going to get to see it again. It's exciting. Uh, so my disclaimer and copyright notice, the information and opinions in this presentation are mine. Uh, as the author and not the employers or affiliated organizations, including but not limited to Irvine Valley College, the South Orange County Community College District, um, or California State University at Fullerton. The presentation is for educational purposes only and does not constitute any legal or accounting advice whatsoever. This presentation is copyright 2008 to 2022 by Bennett Tchaikovsky. All rights are reserved. Any distribution is strictly prohibited. So, Oftentimes, I get a question from students and, you know, they're just kind of saying, how do I get that entry level accounting position? So I've kind of broken this down into a few different parts, uh, your education, resume, interviewing, practicing, waiting for the result, starting a job and doing a great job, and then furthering your education and your career goals. So if you're thinking about you know, you just want to get an accounting job because, by the way, it's extremely daunting to become a CPA, or at least it seems that way. If you're in a position where you've been working but don't have the education, it's going to take a long time because you need a bachelor's degree plus 30 semester units. Um, you're also going to need a year of work experience. You're going to have to pass that CPA exam. But the one thing I really want to caution you about is that if you are planning on being in the accounting field for a long period of time, you will want to become a CPA. And the reason is, is that when you're getting hired, I've seen uh, individuals make 150,000 a job, but if they left, they would be making about 65 or 70. And it's because they're not a CPA because at some point in time, without the CPA license, your experience will not be recognized. So CPA is gonna give you the greatest amount of mobility, but it is a huge pain in terms of the time it takes to go through and to get it. Now, there are some other options, which are a little bit easier than the CPA exam. There's something called an enrolled agent. There is no educational requirement, uh, at least as of this video, as of you know June, 2022, you have to pass an exam, uh, there's a re there's a company called Glime that does a great review course for uh, the special enrolled agents exam. Uh, you'll need to take though probably to get yourself prepared for that. You want to take an individual corporate tax class. The job opportunities are amazing, and I'm just going to show you this here just so you can kind of go through. And this is in Orange County, California. You see all of these, you know they need enrolled agents. There is a huge demand for enrolled agents that are out there. And it's just because so many of the boomers have retired. Uh, so there you go. Okay. So, so enrolled agent, um, again, it will also give you the ability to sign tax returns, to practice in front of the IRS. It's build your own business. It's an amazing opportunity, but you have to do taxes. So, well, okay. Now, as far as your, if you're looking for that entry level type position, what are those skills that you're going to be needing? So the first one I would say right over here is you're going to need to have taken a really strong financial accounting course. And, you know, can you record transactions properly? Do you know how to go through and do revenue, record revenues, expenses, assets, liabilities, and equities? I can help you out with this if you want to look at some of my homework packets from my that I offer for my accounting students. I have these available and I will you know share them with you. Um, I'll put the link for another video that's down below so you can see this. The but the financial accounting education, and this is what is so important, is that if you were just given a bunch of multiple choice questions that's not going to cut it because when you actually have to prepare journal entries or you have to reconcile an account with that type of education, meaning multiple choice questions, that's just not going to cut it. And the other thing is, is like, can you really, what I generally will ask students 
is can you from a list of transactions can you record them you know can you reconcile bank statements can you prepare adjustments can you prepare financial statements now when you're going through and using something like quickbooks quickbooks actually prepares the financial statements for you but you have to know what's going into those statements you have to know what you're doing uh, another thing I would definitely recommend that you do Microsoft Excel. Um, the spreadsheets classes are so absolutely critical for the workplace that if you come over here to ivc.edu, um, again, I teach here, this is what I'm familiar with. So, you know, this is, this is what I'm most familiar with. Uh, Professor Kusoy, uh, Professor Rupa Mather. Uh, Professor Dixie Massaro, they do a great job of teaching these classes, and it's not coming up. Of course, it's not coming up. We'll come back to that in a little bit. Let's see if we can get it to jump. Uh, let's go ahead and try this. Mm. Okay. Oh, almost had it. Oh, I love this. Our website is always uh, it's always fun. Let's see if it comes up here. Oh, there we go. It's exciting. There we go. Okay. So counting one twelve point one, Professor Carolina Casoy, Professor Rupa Mather, counting one twelve point two, counting one twelve point three. So this is really something that I really want to encourage you. You need to take these spreadsheets courses. Anything you can take on spreadsheets, analytics, anything like that, it's just going to put you in that much of a better position. Um, there's also, I'm not as familiar with them, but there also are going to be Google career certificates. I don't know if they have them for accounting, but I do know that they have them for analytics, which if you're going to make yourself a more ideal candidate, that's a great thing to go through and do. You're also going to need to know how to use Microsoft Word and PowerPoint. Um, what are your communication skills, right? Is If English is a second language or a third language or fourth language, and by the way, I know English is incredibly difficult. Many of my students are from Iran. You're reading from right to left. It is very difficult. However, most employers, if you're working here in the United States, you're going to have to put that time in. And the best thing to do is to walk around your house and practice the English. The more you practice, the better off you're going to go through and, and be. So over here, so again, and just general communications, like how do you communicate with others? How do you write emails, right? Um, IVC, we also have some, God, it sounds like an IVC promotional video today, um, right over here, business management. And I think we have a course here, there's business communication. That's a great one to, to go through and to take. That's management 104. Um, I think we used to have also a business English class though, but I don't know if that's being offered this current fall. But in any event, just definitely take a business communications class, very important to do. Um, and what about other classes that you could be taking? And so what I would say is this, you could take managerial accounting. It's not a bad idea to do it. However, the financial accounting is gonna be a lot more important. I would say with the managerial accounting class, one of the more important things is to do a forecasted cash flow but the financial is really what everything is based on. Uh, payroll accounting, understanding how the payroll accounting works and how taxes are withheld from employees, very, very important to go through and do. Now for QuickBooks and then the tax classes, it's just kind of if you want to do it. What I would actually recommend is that you essentially get QuickBooks, get a copy of it, get it, bought, rent it, right, borrow it, and put your life onto QuickBooks. This may sound really strange, but like, you know, what's your asset, right? So I've got a car, um, I have, oh, what's my liabilities? I've got debt, my student debt, whatever you have, put your life onto QuickBooks. And the reason why is because that's going to give you practice of recording transactions 
it's going to get you more familiar with the program. And then when you're talking to an employer, you can say, yeah, I do QuickBooks for a company. That company happens to be me, myself, and I, but it's a company. It's myself, right? That's, it's just, you need practice, right? That's the, that's how you learn accounting is by practicing. And if you put your own life onto it, it's the best way to go. So resume. Okay. I'm going to leave this link in the down below. Uh, this is a resume tool that you can go through and use right over here. It's, this is given to me by a student who is pretty awesome. She was at Cal State Fullerton. This is more for an accounting type role. But if you notice here, it has an objective, the name, what's your education, what's been your experience, right? What's been your, you know, again, leadership experience, you know, again, and your resume is going to be a dynamic evolving thing. And you can see plenty of videos on YouTube to go through and see them. The other thing you're going to want to make sure to do is even if you are social media adverse, you need to be on LinkedIn. Don't go into like some kind of a crypto scam and, you know, don't do something like that. What you want to be doing is, uh, you know, basically be going through and, um, you know, put yourself out there on LinkedIn. And, you know, what's kind of crazy is Rob right over here, one of my former students, uh, he's right now going to be starting a job at Gelman. Um, when Rob was going through and interviewing for his current position, I used LinkedIn to introduce him to, uh, to basically to Gelman, um, to my, to my contact there. And so that's really why LinkedIn is so important because this is how you're going to get jobs. Another kind of thing too, just to kind of think about it, right? Like, why is it? that LinkedIn is so important. Well, as an employer, if I hire you directly, that's going to save me a lot of money. Because why? If I use a recruiter, there's going to be a cost. If I'm, if I'm using a recruiter to hire you full time, there's going to be a 30% fee on the first year salary. Now that's going to be paid for by the company, but it's a lot of money. And then you also look at this over here. If you're going to go work for account temps and say that you're going to be making like 20 bucks an hour from account temps, you're hired by account temps. But what does account temps charge the employer? And again, I'm just kind of making this up or account, whatever the temporary agency is, they're going to mark you up by about 100%. And so you're making 20, they're getting 40 and you don't have a lot of experience. So just remember that being on LinkedIn and using those sites, but again, just use common sense. Do not give your social security number over the phone. Do not like, you know, be very careful about making sure you know who you are going to go through and work for. Um, and let me just see if I put this in here. I think I did. Okay. So one of the things that I also want you to be very aware of is when you're interviewing with accounting firms, you or with companies, you have to go out and do your own due diligence. What kind of company am I going through and working for? And this link right over here, you're going to see basically a video on basically going through and hold on. And I think I have in this video over here, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, how to go through and prepare for interviews and all this over here, like looking up the backgrounds of the companies. So spend some time in going through and looking at this. I true and I'll, and again, I'll leave the link below in the video, but again, I think that's going to be really important for you to, to do. Because when you're interviewing with a firm, you know, did you go through and put in the time prior to the interview? Because if you didn't, you know, it's not going to work out. If, if you didn't put in energy and effort into you know, your interview, it's not going to be good. Now, one of the other things, too, is that if you're looking for other types of, you know, articles or the like, I wrote for Roger CPA Review, um, a lot of different articles. And these, you can find these basically in, this is in this link, you'll find them basically, there's a lot of um, older, I'll see how far back I go. 
This is their archives. Maybe not that old. But if you go through here, you can find a lot of the articles that I've written. I wrote a lot of articles for them over the past year, basically in 2016. So you can find a lot of those there. Note also, because we're in the post-pandemic world, you may be asked to complete some sort of an exam prior to starting with an employer. Do not be put off on this, but this goes back to if you don't feel comfortable or if it's been a while since you've had your accounting education, you need to recognize that immediately. And again, what I have is I basically, I have, I have workbooks that I can send to you you can go through those workbooks. You can basically practice. That's what you need to do to be successful. And if you don't do that going in, and if you just got your life done with multiple choice, when you get out to the job, you're going to fail. Um, and I don't want to see that happen to you. So, and by the way, when you're interviewing, the best thing to do is to ask the, basically is to ask the employer is when, can I hear, when can I expect to hear back from you? And this is something that's very, very important is when am I going to basically be hearing back from you as basically as an employee? So this is Tom Petty. It's a video from the seventies or maybe the early eighties. Uh, but it's called the waiting. And I think it's the waiting is the hardest part. And you just have to know that like when you're like employers are idiots. And I don't mean to be, you know, they just take a very long time and they don't know, like, you just have to just understand that employers, like, it's kind of like Doug from Up, the Disney movie Up. It's like squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. Like they, they get all excited and they got to hire somebody really quickly. But then they just, they, something else comes up. So if it takes them a while to get back to you, don't worry about that. Rather, just kind of understand that that is just part of the process. But that's why you need to be looking for multiple jobs, keep multiple irons in the fire. That's absolutely critical what you're going to need to do for your, for your success. Okay. Now, in terms of starting your new job, like when you get in there, I like to say you want to have a consulting mindset, meaning that you're going to go in, you're going to do a great job, and you're going to go home. You don't stay focused while you're working. Avoid the office politics. Just focus on your work. Now, if you go to your supervisor every three seconds and say, how do I do this? How do, that, that's, that's not going to work. You have to know you're going to have to basically part of doing an accounting job and to make yourself look great is to, they should train you and they should sit down with you and, and say, well, this is how you record transactions. But this is really why going back to my earlier points about using QuickBooks and also um, you know, practicing those study guides that I can send over to you, whatever you're gonna go through and do, you have to be able to figure out things on your own. If you, you know, if as an employer, the worst thing possible is that you have somebody because like they're hiring you to do work. And if you're going to your supervisor every five seconds to ask them how to do something, that supervisor is not going to get their work done. Now, you know, again, figure, figure things out on your own. You're not the first person to do a particular job, but that's really what going back to the education, if you need that, you know, if you need that boost you know, you need, you know, just again, the best thing you can do for accounting, you're learning a skill, the skill takes practice and repetition, write it out, do write it out like multiple times. And this also goes back to is that when you're, you know, avoid the office politics is focus on your work. And if you're not working for a stable company, if something seems like shady, and that goes back to the point earlier about doing your diligence on a particular firm, um, it just you may want to just stay away from it. And if something doesn't look right, you know, you as an accountant are going to get blamed for everything. 
So the most important thing you can always do is to do the right thing because you don't want to lose your, you know, your reputation as an accountant. You're there to record transactions. Just remember to do the right thing and the truth will set you free. Always the best way to go through and to do it just because at the end of the day, when you're looking at your job, you don't want to be a part of any kind of shenanigans. You don't want to be a part of something. Oh, they're trying to like cover up something. It's like Ozark or, you know, uh, we're like, I'm working at Los Pollos Hermanos or I'm right, m- making something out of a Winnebago, you know, whatever it is, right? So you don't want to be having anything to do with that. But in any event, I want to thank you for being here today. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, please please feel free to email me at 1812cpa at gmail.com. I, there are a lot of links from this. I'm going to put them all in the video. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Have a great day.